Welcome back to Mind Your Bob. I'm Marley. I'm Robbie. And I'm Ross. <laughs> Bring it in, guys. <laughs> Boom. You want to introduce our special guest today? Indeed, it's a guy I went to primary school with. Well, yep. they were a year below me in primary school. We've got yep. Ross Anderson. Yeah, and they tell us a bit about himself. So. What primary school did you go to, guys? Pond Park. Pond Park, that's yeah. really Yeah, it's good days, actually. Was one with Yeah, yeah. yeah. I went to Pond Park, and you're again, you were said you were the year below me, but I yep. was Yeah, played a bit of football together as well. I remember that as well, that's great. Hills were boys. Yep. Playing. <laughs> 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 Trying. Trying. <laughs> 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 good times. That's good that you guys have that connection. Yeah. And yeah. Ross would also have been a neighbour of mine, and I know his mum. Yes. Um, so the connection for me with Ross would be through his mum, um, and and uh, Ross's Deborah, yeah. Yes, she was also a, a teacher in uh, oh, Palm Park Nursery, and both my kids went to Palm Park Nursery, <laughs> <laughs> and so I would have known Deborah for somewhere in the region of 16, 17 years now. Very good. And that is now my neighbour. Yeah. Yeah. So wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually she's she's a good girl. But yeah. Thanks for coming in, Ross. No, and thank you. You've for shared some me. stuff on your own social media on Facebook recently. Yes. You have a really interesting um, and strong story to tell. Yeah. And thanks for coming on board to mind your bab and being no, prepared to share it's it because it's very personal. It's very raw. Yeah. Because you're still on your journey. Yeah. Yes. Very much so. But there's no doubt that it's a it's a very positive story and that's what we're trying to do here yeah it takes a lot as well by the way yeah. in, so far, to no no definitely on. I want to it's uh Appreciate it. I really kind of like the idea of sharing my story and I am very kind of open and honest about it with everyone I meet and I personally find it difficult to see the positives in it sometimes which is all part of the thing but you know I know that that what I've done is is positive and is strong and it's a it's a good message to put out there so well, it definitely is Ross well um we we just basically we're gonna hand it over to you and if you just want to start at the beginning <laughs> at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> what's a difficult one um so I obviously I have uh, Tourette syndrome I have uh, OCD um, among other things anxiety disorder um, some dissociative l- nice little list of things but mm-hmm. I um, started showing signs of the Tourette's very young but I probably three or four I think maybe even younger than that my mum remembers okay. it but I wasn't actually diagnosed until I was about 12 or 13 wow yeah really? so for a lot of my childhood I had this going on but I didn't I didn't know what it was mm-hmm. um, teachers didn't know what it was my parents didn't know what it was and even then at the diagnosis um, it was still something that was very strange to us and very new and um, I know my parents didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. Um, but it it genuinely, it didn't really affect me that much as a kid, the Tourette's. Um, it was just something that was, that was always there. Mm-hmm. I went through my teens. Um, I had a lot of anxiety problems early on. Um, mm-hmm. And this was something that wasn't diagnosed or wasn't picked up on at all was it because it was hidden Ross or well, or was it because it was, you didn't know what to do no with it? they just thought it was part of me you know like I'd always kind of been I didn't like going to new clubs didn't like going to meeting new people um, and obviously nobody realised the extremity of it and it was for me very extreme but to people around it it would have just seemed like you know a shy kid who didn't want to go places mm-hmm. yeah. yep. um, but that actually, when I was diagnosed with the Tourette's, I actually said at the time, I think I have OCD, yeah. because I'd had a little look into things, and I, I knew a little bit about it, and I knew that I had these anxieties, and I knew that I had these obsessions, and but I was told at the time, no, I didn't have it, yeah. which was unfortunate, because it would have been obviously good to get it that early, but yeah. that was kind of the thing that hit me more during my teenage years the the OCD and that's what led to the anxiety really so, so th- even at that point it's interesting because if, if, if you were if you'd recognised that, that there was a potential that OCD existed in you yeah. y- you go for um, a talk with a, a doctor or a specialist and, and it's not diagnosed but they're then left with a void of well what is what is it what is exactly is it? this just me is this the yeah. way that uh, that everybody is am I overreacting am I yeah, yeah it was um definitely confusing like I was I was very lucky with the the Tourette's that again it never affected me like it I mean obviously I I knew it was there but I I never had any problems with it like it was just a part of me and um, 
but but it was the OCD going on in the background that really really hit me um, and it built up during the teenage years just most of the obsessions were about like catastrophizing things so things like if I if I didn't hear from my parents you know that they were obviously they'd been in a car crash or something um, and then that applied itself to other things I got into a relationship and it applied itself to that relationship very early on mm. um, and it got to the point where it was too much for that relationship and you know we we were very young at the time so it's yeah. it was very difficult anyway to be to be kids but yeah. um then we uh obviously we we split up because of it and that is really what had my first major major crash so that would have been yeah. about when i was um 17 or 18. so even like just living normal life again just you know trying to, to function really yeah, and you know you're trying to deal with all these things you're going on. You've no answers for them. Yeah, in a relationship breakup, be honest, yeah, because I, I I had no idea what was going on. You know, I yeah. I knew that I was obsessive, and I knew that I was having these catastrophic thoughts, and I knew that I was you know it was taking over like really taking over my life. Yeah. but I had no idea what it was, um, because you know I had been told you know you don't have the OCD. It's just you just have the threats. It's just the twitches that you do. That's that's all you have, and it was very confusing mm -hmm. and really destroying like it was really really scary because you know that that happened and then I I didn't go back to school I this w would have been the start of upper sixth you know I just I, d I couldn't go back I couldn't bring myself to go back I couldn't be seen around people yeah you know I just at that point my life had just stopped basically mm -hmm. um so this was I I just you know, stayed in my room, and I was still having these obsessions and still having these obsessive thoughts. And before I was able to get, you know, clarification on them, like everything's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, because we'd had the the split up, I wasn't able to get the kind of the safety checks that I had before. Yes. Yeah. So it was constant, constant worrying, constant fear, <coughs> and it was just absolutely destroying really negativity has been reinforced by more negativity and yeah yeah completely and that that seems feels like a very steep quick escalation yeah um from perhaps low level anxiety ocd yeah um the Tourette's and as you said the the negative reinforcement definitely was happening internally definitely because at, at this time you know this was me start my my a levels years you know i was ready i'd applied to university i'd you know had conditional offers I was I knew where I was going to go I knew what I was going to do you know I was all set for you know moving out going to university taking on that next step of the life and then this hit me and it triggered it and it just all of that just stopped mm -hmm. it was like not even a, a consideration anymore for me it was just I like I just stopped working like I just you know didn't stay in my bedroom wasn't eating wasn't doing anything. So this is seventeen year, or eighteen years of age. Yeah. Basically, the shutters come down. Yep. And things stop because I know that you. Yeah. Well, I know I haven't spent time with you. That you are obviously a clever, clever person. But yeah. I know also having talked to, to your mum and stuff in terms of what the expectations for you would have been yeah. coming out of school. You were, you, were, you were good at school. Yeah. yeah. You were good at school. Good school too. Yeah. yeah. Always thought you were a clever boy, like, eh? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It, it doesn't, there's no, don't be, <laughs> you're not going to be called to your models down here, young man. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're sitting with these, so you yeah. can't see Well, you're supposed to model yourself. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> genuinely not clever. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 none of our teachers are that clever. I'm a potential, whatever that means. Yeah. But everybody's good at different things, Marty. Correct. Definitely. Everybody's good at different things. <laughs> um, so, that was a. So, so, so you're basically in a, locked in a prison, as, as how I can imagine it. You're, yep. you're in your room, and um, and it must have been really hard for your family too. Yeah, um, I, I know your mum's very caring, your dad's very good, yeah. um, they're very passionate. Yeah, well, but I mean, first of all, like just my family are absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, my mum and dad have been the whole way through have been, you know, there for absolutely anything that I needed, and my brother, my sister, exactly the same. Like completely fully supportive even my extended family you know great aunts great uncles anything anything I needed I was there and that's been an absolute huge part to play in it but yeah at that point I just and it would have been so scary for them yeah. because they had no idea what was going on well, you, you I had no idea you what you shared some on. of this what it was like what so you not only were you just trapped within your, your home but within your room and at times your bed isn't yeah. that right yeah. yeah you'd have been 
I don't know, was it almost immovable or what? Yeah, what, did that, I, what, did, what did that look like? I just, ig- I just ignored everything. I, I know, like, I, d- I didn't want to spend any time around people and, and this scared them. And, you know, they tried to make contact with me and tried to see what was going on. And that made it even worse. And, yep. you know, I, I remember one day, like, I, I dragged my wardrobe across my bedroom door and, you know, wouldn't let anybody in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I can only imagine how scary that would be yeah. for a parent. And, you know, it, it got to the point where I ended up actually um walking the three or four miles down to Lisburn one day and then I also I I called my mum because I was just walking around Lisburn really early in the morning had no idea what was going on and I just you know that w- that was me at the point where I just thought you know nothing's worth it anymore and I was you know heading towards railroads thinking mm-hmm. you know this this is it there's there's no point anymore and you know I called my mum and said there look I need any help? Um, what age was that at? Let me ask you. I would have been about 18, 17, 18, 18, 18 still again. Very young. Yep. At that time, and right? she she had to come down and get me, and she took me home, and I remember because she she left me with my brother, um, because she was sort she was sorting out the help, mm-hmm. and you know I can't even imagine what that would have been like for my brother as well. You know, having to sit there with me. Is your brother younger or older? Uh, younger, three years younger. Okay. Yeah. So. And that is that's just, tough. Yeah. 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 What about them? Um, you're see, like you're saying the bedroom there was that like your wee safety net? Yeah, it was. Now, this was kind of my first. I've yeah. had a, a couple of stages where I've kind of had to stay at home. This was the one that was more depression based yeah. than anxiety, and uh, again, it was depression slash the OCD kind of keeping me there. Um, it wasn't that I couldn't go out, like physically, like I yeah. wasn't going to have. Uh, panic attacks or anything like that it was just nothing had nothing had the meaning nothing had you know I had no no sense of what the the future so it was just yeah. I just didn't didn't think didn't care I just like it you know the days were just nothing to me yeah mm-hmm. um but I did start to get out after a while that's that's why I was actually um had an emergency referral and then went to see uh, a private psychiatrist um, and that's when I was actually diagnosed with the OCD very early on. Yeah. Um, the guy said to me, "You know, you've got you've got severe OCD. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, it's obvious. It's been going on for a while." From a, from a diagnosis of not having OCD to <laughs> you've got severe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it's another experience out in it. You know, it's basically it's up and down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was it was almost like it was a relief for me because it was my first kind of sense of. Yeah. You know, I had an understanding a little bit, and that I had this idea of why things were happening this way, and that it wasn't, you know, normality, and that that this isn't what life is. Um, and it was definitely, definitely a relief. And he 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 put me on medication early for it that I'm that I'm still on today, and that really kind of curtailed it at that point, yeah. and brought me back to a position where I could start you know going out again and starting to see some kind of future for myself and and making moves in that direction again which was a very very big part for me that that diagnosis yeah. really good and um, what sort of um we plan these to your 30s then yeah we're we'll having that sort of time frame there because that's quite a transitional period and then you know, oh yeah yeah obviously you becoming a man and you know growing up a little bit but how was that yeah so i it, it took me a while to get back out and go on again i yeah. did it you know Step by step, I I went to went to tech for a bit, dropped out, went to tech again, dropped out, uh, finished a course eventually there, and then I went away to university in Leeds, and I lived away in Leeds for two or three years, yeah. um, and again at, at that point I was back in the position you know that I have this this life now and that I know where I'm going again, yeah. but in reality I hadn't addressed everything that I needed to address Mm -hmm. and I didn't have the the capabilities really to take care of myself enough to be able to push through all that and it just started kind of snowballing for me I like I was fine and then I started missing lectures I started having trouble sleeping I started having problem anxiety problems about going to the lectures because I'd missed them I stopped taking my medication regularly and just one thing after another it picked up 
Um, did you recognize what was coming? Not really, no. I, I, like, I, I knew things were getting worse, mm-hmm. but in my head I was always like, it's only a wee bit, it'll pass. Mm-hmm. Like it's only, and you know, I've only I've only missed this week of lectures. Like I even, I did one year of a course, and then I I stopped it and changed to a different course because you know in my head that would be mm-hmm. that would be the solution, but it never it never occurred to me you know that I needed to to take that step out, and really figure out what the problem was and yeah. you know build that strong basis before I could move on to that kind of thing. I definitely definitely like looking back, I know I'd kind of done it too early, mm-hmm. but. I had no idea. I had no way to know that, and you know, if I hadn't done that, it wouldn't. I wouldn't be sorry where I am now, and yeah, you know, it's. I, I don't regret any of it, but so being, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so being over at university, by the way, um, again away from the nest, away from the family support yep. as well, was that tough? Yeah, it was. Um, again, I still had the you know I hate not good with new people, not good with uh, new places. So so moving in there was it was difficult, but I you know I made really really good friends. Um, met some really great people and you know everyone was lovely but mm-hmm. i i settled and i was pretty comfortable but it was just those little things were ticking away in the background yeah you know Definitely. started missing the lectures started t- not taking the medication and then you know one day i'm in the, the airport ready for my flight over and i start panicking you know i can't get on this plane yeah so uh, i don't get on the plane i miss the flight and then it's I'll be okay the next one yeah. the next one I'm fine but then the next time I can't get on it and then suddenly I'm having to get the boat across mm-hmm. instead of the plane so I was getting the boat up to Strand Rower and getting the bus down yeah. and it just kept getting worse like that and I never really put a stop in it I yeah. kept kept trying and trying um, but it just got it got to the point then that I was uh, home one summer this was I'd, I'd, I decided to take a break from the university went out with my brother to pick up my sister who was working down in Belfast yeah. and we were both slightly lost it was dark it was late and I was not in a good mindset and I just had a, a bad panic attack a really really bad panic attack and I'd, I'd had anxiety problems before yeah. but this was the first one that really, really hit me to the point where, you know, I felt like I was gonna die, um, and I, I tried to hide it the whole time in the car because you know I didn't want my brother to panic because you know he's my little brother. Um, and I just remember whenever we got to my sister, I got out of the car and I just couldn't breathe, couldn't stand, couldn't do anything. Um, completely completely shook and that was my first real bad experience with the anxiety and that's really what kicked off to everything to the point where I am today that that one experience yeah it's quite scary yeah but Mm -hmm. but I mean if it hadn't happened then it would have happened another time and you know it's uh and and from from that point then you didn't go back to university didn't go back to university so at that point I stopped going out altogether really and that's when things really closed down again yep Completely. So that's when the anxiety and uh, the agoraphobia. Many. Uh, when was that, Ross? Many years ago. So this would have been when I was about twenty two, twenty three, I think. Maybe yeah, something twenty three. Mm-hmm. So by seven, seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. And obviously that's something that I'm still battling with today. But I've. I know you say that and you underplay it, Ross. But <laughs> the, the recovery in this last year and a half has been. Yeah. Outstanding, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to that because there's a real good point in this message. But I think it's really important that we we, yeah. we, paint, we, we share the picture that, that of this next bit yeah. that, that yeah. you went through because there are a lot <coughs> of people who perhaps will watch this, will recognise and understand what you're going to share yeah. about yeah. this this period of yeah. s- six years or, or some upwards of six years of of when um, the guy who's actually getting through university and and, and, and going to <laughs> succeed in that realm then hits the buffers. Yeah, big step, completely. Big step. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, everything, <clears throat> everything just stopped. So I was not going out at all. I, I couldn't, I couldn't leave the house. Um, I couldn't leave my room. It was just pure, pure fear. And I've actually, it's actually happened to me, me twice. So this first time it was bad. The second time it was worse. So I, I went through this. 
and I, you know, started to get myself out and started to get myself um, better, which was difficult enough at the time. But then I was I was out one day um, with my dad and had another one of those big panic attacks when I was out, and that one, um, that one really hit me back. Now it had taken me about a year, maybe more, to get from that point to to get from where I was to there, and it was. It was difficult enough then, but the sec the second one is the one that really, <coughs> really shook me. And I physically, um, I couldn't get out of bed for. Like, it's hard for me to put a concept of time on it because you know it was just completely. I was just completely lost. Like I stepped out of life, but it was months. You know, I I physically couldn't get out of bed. I was my my days were. I would wake up. I would uh, try and force myself back to sleep for as long as possible. I'd be like lying in bed, forcing myself back to sleep until afternoon, as much as I could. Doors closed. Yep. Blinds. Yep. Absolutely everything. Dar- darkness. Yep. If I, because if I sat up, I felt like I was going to faint. If I rolled over, I felt like I was going to faint. You know, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't think. I couldn't do anything, and it was just pure survival just get to the i got to the afternoon and then it was like okay you've made it this far it's nearly time to go to sleep again you've survived the day nearly and then it got to the point where it was night and i knew that i could go to sleep and i wouldn't have to feel it anymore and that was the relief that i had the only relief that i could have was that you know those those couple of minutes before i fell asleep where it's like you know you're gonna have a break yeah for, it's almost for like hours a, it's now. almost like a drug yeah it's like this this is it this, this is, is you've yeah. you done it you did it today it and it wasn't and it was just pure survival and and obviously with that idea that the sleep brings a break brings on the suicidal thoughts because yes. then you're thinking you know you could just end this now and never have to, to deal with it and i kind of it, ironically was saved by my OCD yeah. because my OCD manifests itself in a medical phobia uh, so I didn't want to do anything that would cause myself to kind of lose control of my body or that I would maybe end up waking up in a hospital Yeah. so I was too scared to, to take my own life at that point because in case I got it wrong mm-hmm. basically um and that was a a hard thing to come to terms with as well. Yeah. But again, it's uh, glad I, I made that choice. You yeah. know, I'm glad I'm glad I didn't. And on that note, by the way, how long did that period last for? The not being able to go to bed. And so that would have been months. Months. Right? I mean months. Yeah. So it, and it was, you know, it was. I I I only got out of bed to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and that was so difficult. <laughs> like that was panic attacks. I mean, I was clinging onto walls. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't walk. Um, absolutely, just completely, completely nothing. Like I, that, that was my life. Like I, I remember, I, um, I remember the, the one thing I remember about it is I actually asked my mum at one point, you know, because they were asking you, know, what can we do? And I asked her to buy me a big teddy bear. Yeah. Because I just needed something to, to have that physical to hold on to. Yeah. I remember that was the first thing that actually made me feel comfortable. Yeah, I, I get that. I have a big, I have a big pillow in bed. Yeah. And eventually, during the night, it'll end up on the on the floor. But see, a part of the night, yeah, I have the pillow. I exactly, and I th- uh, that helps. That still yeah, still, yeah, still that, helps my anxiety. That side, I've got the pillow, but yeah. I, but I get that. It's, it's just something. There's something that like, just something to hold on to. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it was such a you know, I was sitting there like 20, 24 years old. Like I buy me a big teddy bear. I was like. But it, I knew that that's that I needed something. And then your mum, she got to the telly. She did, she did, <laughs> and absolutely no questions, no yep. judgment. Yeah. You know, it was mom. there. She was, and you know, same thing. Anything I've ever thought would help. You know, they're they're absolutely fantastic. But yeah, it was a it was a long, long, long few months. Um, you know, again, parts of it I just don't remember because it was such a just step out from life. But the feeling I do remember, and it was torture like it was genuinely torture 
Yeah, and and you got to the, the, the extent of suicidal ideation and yeah. thinking about it. Yep. But as you say, <coughs> your OCD was the thing that yep. prevented you from yep. actually. Yep. And I think when I realised that, I kind of realised, well, got to do something. Yes. <laughs> um, so I just started challenging myself in little bits, yep. and <coughs> this has been, you know, what I still do today. Um, then it was you know set up for a little bit yeah um just set up f- 10 seconds then set up 10 minutes mm. um and then i had a guitar that i couldn't play yeah. so i just you know just try and play it for like five minutes just mess around with it and this got to the point then it's like okay stand up you know stand up and st- stand against the wall for 10 seconds or sit in your chair for 10 seconds and this was this was my this is what i my routine basically this was this was all i could do during those days and this this went on for months a year yeah the the tiniest little Mm -hmm. and it was absolutely exhausting um terrifying because you know i had absolutely no concept that I could ever have a life again but it was just pure survival over anything else Um, and to think not to jump ahead too far but to think from there to where you came now you're sitting in front of a camera telling us your story yeah big journey definitely and it's fair play and the thing is like I know if I went back to myself and said you can get through this I just like myself now you've no idea you don't know what I'm going through you don't know what it's like and I completely get that but because at that point you're you you you're, as <laughs> you said you you you're in your room except to go to get to get yeah um shard toilet that thing stuff. I wasn't even it was just I wasn't even like taking care of myself at all you so know I just so you and your mum and your family are, are feeding you yeah giving you food and your water tea your coffee whatever those things are but that's it that's yep. that's it is a it is a prison yeah for for want of a better yeah so and and you're in this prison and and the, the thought process is not good. Um, and that that trapped. So I mean, I, I love that actually. That sort of that that image of achievable steps. Yeah. Yeah. And having the humility to say, what's, you know, what's going to be today? Ten yeah. seconds sitting in that chair over there. Yeah. And get back. But actually, it, as you said, and this is hard for a lot of people to understand the physical and mental exhaustion of actually even doing that. Yeah. And getting back, but it's a victory, and chalking off that as a chalking that off as a as a win. Yeah. And it building is. up to. It's a very, very good. it's a very difficult mindset. And again, I, I, I personally like. I know that it took strength from me, yeah. but even looking back, the the little negative voice in my head is still saying, you know, it was just, it was just survival. But I know, I know it was strength, and I know it was. I know I dealt with it, the way that I needed to deal with it, and, I, and it was little steps and it's it's the way that i i still do it today but i think one of the main things that i um that i kind of credit to myself for the recovery is that i never looked too much into the the long term in the sense that i never said you can get back to normality but i also never said you can't Mm -hmm. like i was all very careful to never say this is the limit of your recovery this is you know i didn't think about where my life will be i just thought about tomorrow you're going to do this you know your goal maybe for the for the next month is try and get down to the kitchen yeah you know i didn't think two years time you're going to be out doing this you're going to be out going out in the car like it was just small achievable goals and making those goals and and even being able to allow myself not to make them which is a very kind of uh, difficult mindset to get yourself into as well so I talked um, I talked recently about I went to um, actually I went to the dentist yeah. um, which is something that I know lots of people are scared of but with my medical phobia it was just absolutely yeah. frightening and I got to the point where I went and I got you know the cleaning done and I got an injection and for me that was absolutely huge and I said yeah. you know this is such an achievement but then the next time I went I went and I wasn't able to get the things that I'd done before but I knew that what I did on that day 
was harder for me because in my head I still had the anxiety from the time before where I had the injection mm -hmm. where I got all this stuff done so I still had that lingering and I knew that I was more anxious to go yep. but I went there and I got less done than I had previously done before which is a really difficult thing mm -hmm. to live with yeah. because you feel disappointed even though you've done more it's just you can't show it to people yeah. and you know I knew whenever I came out like I looked at my mom and said you know uh, oh, I, I only got to clean it on and I knew that you know she would have been a little bit disappointed because it wasn't what she was expecting because of what I did the last time and this is something that I've had to keep going the whole way through my recovery you know you set these goals yeah. and sometimes these goals are you know they don't they don't show in the way that the big steps do you know some like when I was starting to, to get out of the house and go out in the garden you know some days it was just can you get out of bed today yeah. and to others that looks like a failure yeah. and it's really difficult to give yourself credit for just mm -hmm. doing that that thing and that's been something that's I think has helped me a lot in being able to come to terms and being able to accept that I know how difficult these things are for me and I know the effort that I'm putting into it yeah. so <coughs> I might not see the same results every time but to know the effort that goes into it to be able to accept that, that, that that's what I did and that it is good that I did that even though it doesn't have the same outcome very good uh. so uh, when did the, when did when does the change sort of come in then in terms of the bit that gets you to where you are today yeah I think so um it's been gradual the whole way you oh. know it's it was very much those steps and like, like I said it's it's taken it's taken the years but it's you know it was sit up go to the kitchen go outside walk to the top of the garden mm -hmm. sit in the car go out in the car go for a lap around where we live drive into Lisburn and back yeah. and it was just step by step by step the whole way never never thinking long term just 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 living it and, and going through it and it was a long journey but you know I did keep keep making those checks and you know yeah. then it's like what do I do next yeah. you know because because if you told me back then that I'd be leaving the house you know that was just you're lying like that's yeah. that's never going to happen yeah. and then it, it gets to the point where you know I'm going to appointments with counseling and things like that and I'm doing all these things that I thought I could could never do and it was it's just been step by step by step to the point now where obviously um by seven months ago i moved out mm -hmm. where i'm currently living on my own yeah. and you know again that's something that absolutely even if you said that to me two years ago yeah. it would have been completely I, I, I wouldn't even I would imagine you wouldn't yeah, have like, it and you'd have been petrified I imagine yeah like it wouldn't have even been real to me like the yeah. thought that that could happen um, and it's just the whole way it's been keeping those little steps and I've been yeah. very lucky to meet some very important people mm. yeah. along the way who have helped me massively and have been able to give me advice yeah. and point me in the right direction um I've been very lucky in that sense um, and it's something that I find very important and it's something that I want to yeah. go on and continue doing in my life making sure that everyone else can you know have these resources because they're not particularly easy to come by like I was so I was very lucky that Robbie is my neighbour and uh, he knew a bit about what I've been going through at the time and he knew someone who was doing uh, personal training from a mental health perspective yes. um, Paul Oldham who he yeah put me in touch with mm -hmm. and that was that was something that made an absolute huge change in my life um so I started going and it just it gave me some independence it gave me someone that I could relate to yeah. it started uh, to build up a little bit of because uh, obviously when you don't leave the bed for years you you lose a little bit of fitness yeah. <laughs> um but it started to give me a little bit of self-confidence back um and that was that was very much 
the point where it turned into, you know, I can do anything again. Um, someone who was very honest. And, you know, we could, <laughs> we could, yeah, we could, we could, you know, talk about anything. The, the worst parts of the worst, you know, the stuff that you don't talk about, the stuff that just doesn't come up, you know, we joke about it and laugh about it and it just... You get it normal? You yeah, it? exactly. It was like, I've, it was the first time, you know, I felt like I was relating to someone yeah. who had experienced it. And it was the first time, because even when you talk about the mental health stuff and you talk about the feelings of depression and things like that there's still all those little little bits mm -hmm. that you you just don't talk about yeah and um, you know we were just able to to talk about them and it was just like okay so i'm not nuts you know yeah, yeah. or i am but other people are too <laughs> so <it's laughs> i think that's it there's no you know people re you talked earlier on about um uh, possibly not <laughs> not thinking you're going to live a normal life but what is a normal life yeah just true. you know it, 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 is it the is it pain cell not speed bumps all the show yeah, absolutely everybody has their um their quirks and their idiosyncrasies and their differences and their problems and their issues it doesn't matter yeah well, you see, even in, even in business i just know that <coughs> you do two three days a month where everything just comes at once yeah you just think Wow. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it's where business went smoothly all the time. It's yeah. not going to happen. Sure. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Although I, I did hate people saying that to me when yes. I was bad. Yeah. Yes. That there's no such thing as normal. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. because yeah. it is something that I was told a lot. Obviously, because you yeah. know I say I my I always say I you know I want to be normal. Yeah. I want to live a a normal life. Yeah. And people say you know what's what's normal is no such no such thing as normal. Yeah. And I almost felt at the time that people were saying to me, you know, everyone goes to, through stuff. But you're weak because you're not it's like coping with it like, like everybody like else is. Yeah. They didn't mean it like that, but no, that no, yeah, yeah, you completely. Because that's yeah. what you just you know you hear the negative and everything. Yes, but I do, I do understand it, you know, and it's it is important because people don't talk about it. <laughs> like yeah. uh, it's, it's 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 finding your normal thing, yeah. isn't that it? I mean, it's, it's finding your level and. Um, and you, you <laughs> talked earlier on, and I thought it was actually one of the most healthy things that you did yourself without anybody else's influence. Is you weren't reaching to be like <laughs> anybody else. You weren't saying, yeah, it didn't sound like that to me. That you no. weren't saying, there's where I need to go to to be like my brother, to be like my um, my cousin or my friend, the guy that I went to school with, uh, or whatever. Um, you had aspirations, but they were your own aspirations, which is yeah. much more healthy than than yeah. than envying someone else's yeah. Yeah. perceived. And I had no to. Or I, I never would have made any kind of recovery. Like I, ha I had to be realistic. I had to say, you know, this this week's goal is yeah. get out of bed. You know, I couldn't sit there thinking, okay, two years time, you're gonna have to be out of the house. Yeah. You're gonna need to be get looking for a job. Yeah. You know, you, you just can't, because things change, things happen, and, and you have to yeah. take it as you can. The, the seven months, um, how has it been? You told us about the dentist, but how has it been? So, so I imagine <laughs> it hasn't been, it hasn't all been plain sailing. No, no, of course not. It's it's been ups and downs. Like, but it's you know, having my own space is obviously nice. Yeah. Um. It's it was anxious at the start. It's absolutely exhausting. You know, yeah. I told myself, you know, whenever I get moving in here, I'll be like, oh, I'll be able to go out about Lisburn and. Yeah. But I'm just, you know, just looking after myself is yes. is absolutely exhausting. But it's, yeah. you know, it's freedom. Yeah. And it's I'll tell you what, I can relate with you on it. Yeah. I don't know what you think of me if I'm normal or not. But I'm <laughs> not. But living on sea and on my own, I struggled, man. It's, it is so difficult. Like just it's didn't like it at all. I couldn't adapt to it. I'm used to a crazy house. Yeah. You're yes. Just there, and you're going, now what? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you know, I mean, you're there and you're doing it, so. Yeah. yeah. So, it's it's been exhausting, but it, it's good. And I'm... Good. You know, I still have the bad days, and I still have yeah. the slips, and I still have the. But I I deal with them the same way I dealt with you know sitting up in the bed for the first time. Yeah. You know, you take it as it come. You know, at the moment I'm like, today, you're gonna get the dishes done. Yeah. Tomorrow yeah. you're gonna get your washing done. The day after that you're gonna get your shopping done. And, then and then sometimes you're gonna see the major bob crew. <laughs> yep. And sometimes <laughs> sometimes I fall behind, and that's yeah. I still have the support. Like my mum comes down once a week was we started recently she comes down once a week and just helps me tidy out about and gives me that reset you yes. know yeah. so that i can start doing it myself again and it it helps me you know i i keep on top of things more because i feel like i'm trying to do it for her rather yep. than myself yep. and it just little things like this like we're still learning so much every day on how best to deal with what i'm going through and it's yeah it's it's a team effort and but it is it's 
it's just it's just freedom and you know I've started doing a taking a course now I've just done my level finished my level two hopefully starting level three mm-hmm. in September for counseling Brilliant. which is um, definitely something that I want to get heavily involved in um, you know this is this has been my life and this has yeah. been my experience and I feel like I do have a an experience to, to share with people yeah um, so this is definitely the kind of uh, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it but the counseling is absolutely fantastic um, yes. great people the, the woman taking it Carolyn is unbelievable yeah, yeah. I met Carolyn she, you put me she is absolutely fabulous. unbelievable she yeah, and, 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 and the group you know it's I've made friends in the group you know I you know you lose touch with everyone yeah. it, it happens mm-hmm. especially when you're not leaving the house yeah. and and I don't like hold that against anyone or anything you know I, yeah. I do the exact same thing like I, I'm still terrible you know people will message me ask me how you're going and I'll just not reply to it yeah. Yeah. because that little bit of energy I need to spend it doing something else yeah. out there and it, and then I sit for the next two months thinking I was so rude I didn't reply to that yeah. and it just kind of spirals but sometimes people don't understand <coughs> that it does take a lot you know it does you, you know yourself your phone's probably going I get emails constantly phone calls and even sometimes my friends are ringing up like that I'm beat yeah <laughs> or we get tomorrow but yeah. sometimes they make it a family but it's just you haven't got the energy sometimes no yeah. but the, yeah. the people I've made on the course like I've met some absolutely fantastic right. people and made friends that I you know talk to and go out with and it's just step by step I've, yeah. I've find myself in these situations that have that have helped me and yeah this is this is my next step of the journey you know get on with the the counseling and then yeah. hopefully move myself into a position where i can start helping out generally in the, the mental health scene and yeah. you know things that i experienced that should be done better things that i've experienced that could help others um that's that's there's where i want to go there's, with a, it. there's a lot to be done there's a lot to be done and I, I, I commend you for, for yeah. stepping into that breach in the wall which is it definitely is but I, say what I heard it was again you were coming on as well that's a big step because I remember speaking to your mum before and I heard what was going on and I was yeah. just, when I heard your <coughs> I was like fantastic big yeah. step so the one thing I find very important to remember when it comes to change and trying to, to, get, to get these changes is that you know everyone I've met has tried to help me yeah and even the bad experiences I've had in the system, outside of the system, you know, nobody's doing it out of malice. Yeah. Nobody's doing it because they don't want you to feel better. Yep. It's just they don't have the understanding. And it's just I, I always say, you know, it's it's ignorance over malice. It's nobody yes. is trying to put you down like this. So have go into it with like a you know, that positive mindset that, that this person is there to help you and and these people are trying to help and that's you know i want to change things because things aren't good yeah but it's not because these people aren't trying yeah and it's difficult to change things and people are going to be stubborn but um you know it's it's working together really more than anything else rather than saying you're doing this wrong yeah you know it's working with them because everyone just wants to to help really yeah yeah very good, very good. Fantastic. Well, guys, we'll wrap it up for today, but um, if you've been watching there and you, you recognise any of the things that Ross has been talking about, we'll put a few numbers up here at the end as usual. Do not do not sit, suffer in silence. Reach out. There is help available out there, guys. And uh, again, if you've got anything you want to share with us, tweet us, yep. Facebook message us. Anything. Yeah? Yep. <laughs> right. Thank you, Eden. Just get on board. So, again, thanks for coming in. No, thank uh, you very much for having me. Yes, yeah. you too. Yeah. <laughs> well, far I've been up delivering with a scissor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't seen you in years, so it's good to see you. Yes, definitely. Thanks for coming on. So, uh, all right. Again, we are. Brilliant. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob.